ะโอเทเลอร์ไอเวดอดอะลองไทม์ฟอร์ดิสมูฟี่เพราะฉะนั้นฉันเป็นแฟนของคุณงานคุณลองไทม์แฟนของบริชนาคอฟฟ์ฟอลโลดิสดานส์คาริเออร์ฟอร์เอเวอร์และเป็นแฟนใหม่ของเกรกรีสแต่ฉันคิดว่าเขาเป็นแฟนมากที่สุดฉันก็รู้ว่าสิ่งที่ดีที่สุดคือเมื่อคุณรอคอยฟังสิ่งที่ดีคุณก็คิดว่าโอ้โหแต่ฉันจะให้คุณรู้สึกสบายใจฉันชอบภาพนี้ฉันคิดว่ามันสนุกมากมันสนุกมากและมีอะไรที่ใช้ชีวิตของคุณเขาพูดถึงเรื่องที่ดีและมีการแสดงที่ดีที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ดีที่สุดที่ Would want to defect to the Soviet Union? Okay, so he's mad about Vietnam. We're all mad about Vietnam, but uh, that seemed like cutting off one's nose to spite one's face. Mm. But then um, I read this research, uh, a distillation of the research, uh, where indeed this has happened, uh, where uh, GIs have defected to North Vietnam, etc. Now my my question is, which came first, Goldman's story? Or the research, and then the story based on the research. Uh, the story came first. I mean, I, I set out to make a dance film and uh, a unique dance film that would combine strong story and narrative, which I like, and characterization and acting, um, with dance and dance in a non-performance setting. So I, I really had a philosophy of the kind of film I wanted to make before I began. I then made up my mind that instead of hiring Actors and doubling them with dancers, which has happened recently. I wanted to hire the real thing, you know, great dancers, and then try to get acting performances from them. So this was all preparatory to actually having a story. Once I had that, and I knew I wanted a contemporary film that utilized the the two strengths of these men, um, both as dancers and as men, as individuals. I mean, Brishkov is unique. He is Russian through and through. I'm not going to make him a cowboy, you know. He's Russian, a ballet dancer. Heinz is black. Tap dancer, American, and and I went to various writers and asked them the, about a f about a story that could uh, be intense and at the same time utilize these men's talents. And James Goldman came up with a story for White Knights. It was an original story, and I thought, gee, that's strange. I've never heard it before. It's very uh, unique, uh, but is it credible? Then I went out and did the research, and found that although it's a hypothetical story. Certainly is a fictional, you know. It's, it is it is an original screenplay, so it isn't documentary. It's not a docudrama. There could be precedents for the situation, and um, in the case of the Gregory character, you know, there were 93,000 deserters from the war in Vietnam, uh, more than all the U.S. wars combined. Two percent of those people are still unaccounted for by the Pentagon and and living in foreign lands. And since Russia was the number one ally of North Vietnam. The the thought might be that if uh, a disaffected um, Black American GI wanted to leave, he could have ended up there, and the Russians certainly would have utilized him for propaganda purposes, talking to third world students and third world people about the inequities of the American system. That was the premise. Now, uh, certainly we know that during the Korean War there were 21 U.S. GIs who stayed in China after the war and lived there for as m some for as, mu as much as 18 years, married, had families. <coughs> some black um, you know, the uh, some black deserters uh, uh, recorded messages uh, from North Vietnam to the South Vietnamese uh, to the to the U the U.S. Army in South Vietnam, encouraging black uh, soldiers to desert. So that was the that was basically the the substantiation to say, all right, we're going to we're going to put it here. Now, once we had this Raymond Greenwood character, Greg Gregory Hines, in Russia. Then we all then did further research as to how he would have evolved, um, and you know I feel satisfied that in, within this hypothetical situation um, uh, we have an accurate picture. But uh, who knows in this instance? And as a filmmaker, all you can do is make an educated guess and then go forward. It is an entertainment film. It is a film designed to make people think and to explore defection from two points of view. Um, 
it's interesting from that American's point of view, but certainly, um, you know, Brushikov's story and his real life situation is is uh, is quite acceptable. Uh, having lived here for ten years, having reached immense success in the West, what would happen if, while flying to Japan to dance a charity engagement, his plane uh, had an emergency and went down back in Russia? Defection is considered a crime there. Uh, people like Rudolf Nureyev were tried in absentia and sentenced to prison terms. It creates a very interesting Kafka situation, and I wanted to explore uh, a story f from an uh, artist's point of view, a man who gave up his art for politics and a man who gave up his politics for art, how uh, the two meet and clash and find that they can't really ignore the other side. I, I read an article, and I'm sure you know uh, the article I'm referring to um, in American film, where uh, uh, Barishnikov says, this is not my story. And in the same uh, story, uh, you are quoted as saying that this is somewhat uh, the story of Mikhail Barishnikov. Now, is he denying that this is his story or any part thereof because he fears repercussions, or why is he denying it? Well, no, he's right. It is not his story in the sense that when the film begins, we take a character not unlike Barishnikov to begin with. So in other words, the, the man today is where the film begins. We jump off then into a hypothetical situation that has never happened. I mean, he has not found himself back in Russia uh, and, and hopefully won't because it, he, he is uh, maybe persona non grata there. But the fact is that he is saying it's not my story because he has not ever experienced it. Well, I proposed the hypothetical situation to him and that's why he agreed to do the film. He has consistently refused time and time again, probably for the reasons that you suggest, to do the story of his own defection, because he does have people back in Russia that could be maybe affected. But this story really uh, comes into the you know to a new picture that has not occurred. I mentioned this story to most Eastern European immigrants, and they always have a little smile on their face because they've all thought about this: what might happen in an accident if I find myself back there. But all that said, it it is an uncanny situation that happened both in the shooting of the film and watching him do the role and also I think now in the finished film. You see Barishnikov in situations that maybe haven't taken place but the context is real. How would he deal with the loved ones that he left behind? He never thinks that he will see them again. He never has to deal with them face to face. Never has to deal with his culture face to face. The whole concept of de defection is a fascinating one because someone has to lop off their entire life up to that point. Their culture, their loved ones, their family, uh, their language, and they can't go back. What happens if you go back? And what might be the, the situation where you have to confront all those people that you never thought you would? That I think is interesting and I think Misha had to reach into himself and pull out emotions that uh, are, are in that, that uh, neverland of reality and fiction and so forth. And, uh, uh, I think he, he was a very brave person to do this film. Uh, he certainly had to confront elements in himself that have been lying dormant for some time. And I think some of that, um, that quality comes out in the film. It's very intriguing and I think somewhat unusual uh, in a performance uh, in a feature film. I couldn't agree with you more. Taylor, nice to have had this chance to talk with you and uh, look forward to whatever your next project is, uh, maybe another visit. Great. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you. Are so good. My questions to wallpaper that I'm not used <laughs> to looking at a real face. Okay, speed. Taylor, which came first then, the research or Goldman's story? In a certain story, in American film, before this film came out a long time ago, Barishnikov says this has nothing to do with his life story, and in the very same story you're quoted as saying that it is somewhat Barishnikov's story. Now, uh, what about this contradiction? Why did Barishnikov decide to do this when he has turned down similar stories, I'm sure? How did you get Barishnikov to do this? Okay, just reactions now.
Okay. Thank Great. you. <laughs>